Warface's debut on Xbox One and PS4 could have proven to break new grounds in the console space as the first action-focused 60fps CryEngine title. However, like it shows its Xbox 360 origins in its graphical feature set, from aggressive shadow cascades to popping among objects and light sources, it also has its times on Xbox One where it doesn't stray far from these roots in performance. But focusing on Xbox One and PS4, both run at a fixed 1920x1080 resolution with temporal anti-aliasing. Graphically identical between each other, against the PC version, Xbox One and PS4 use the PC's high setting except with lower quality texture filtering and the shadows are set to the PC's medium setting. Now the temporal AA has a hard time with horizontal edges and it completely butchers how leaves look. Plus, this method requires a high frame rate to keep the previous frame that's blended in as unnoticeable as possible. But both consoles have their times where ghosting is evident due to too low a frame rate to sample from. Falling under 45 FPS and losing the illusion of 60 FPS reveals a slight but an apparent blurring to the image's clarity. Now on to performance, first is a look at the multiplayer using the team deathmatch as a sample. Xbox One can keep the 60 FPS during lulls when you're walking through short winded or vacant areas, even sprawling areas when fog is prison like in the blackout operation and bag and tag game mode. But otherwise 60 FPS is an impossibility. Multiplayer maps like Street Wars and Farm see the frame rate regularly fluctuate in the range of the high 40s to high 50s, occasionally dipping into the low 40s while in an engagement. Throw in a shuttle car exiting and entering the station on the shuttle map into the mix and you can actually see the frame rate in competitive fall into the high 30s. On PlayStation 4, you can expect a 13-22% to improvement in frame rate where the GPU is a bottleneck. PvP is pretty close to a locked 60 FPS on some maps, like on Street Wars, Sirius, and Hangar 2 with only a few 1 or 2 FPS dips. But shuttle is still ways off from having locked performance still seeing frame rates in the mid 40s while on or in the platform. While multiplayer doesn't fare poorly across the board on all maps on PS4, the cooperative PvE mode is decidedly bad for PS4 and Xbox One. Having tested 4 missions, the landing sequences and co-op are generally taxing, with Xbox One seeing frame rates around the mid 30s and even as low as 28 FPS. On PS4, landing normally stays in the mid 40s, going as low as 38 FPS in the case of the Anubis mission. Engagements in open areas will operate in the 40s to mid 50s, sometimes peaking to the high 50s on a map like Earthshaker, with long range engagements on Xbox One occasionally dragging it down to the mid 30s. While PS4 has a performance lead in many cases, it's still suboptimal just like Xbox One, still being able to go into the 40s. It's been over a week since Warface has been out on Xbox One and there haven't been any updates pushed to either version or any announcement of Pro or X port in sight so we may have to wait to see if the Battle Royale update for consoles comes with a performance patch. But for the time being, there's no splitting hairs about it. Xbox One is the worst performing, and as a result of the AA solution chosen, technically the worst looking version of all four consoles. But the co-op experience on PS4 also fails to deliver constant high frame rates. Moving on to the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, it's clear that the higher base frame rate the PS4 had over the Xbox One is more important than the performance differential between the Pro in boost mode and the X running unpatched Xbox One games. After the opening seconds of a match, all of the tested maps except for Shuttle handed in a locked 60 FPS. Pro and X see drops into the higher 50s every so often on the map, but X still went into the high 40s in one instance. Now it's hard to get like for like shots in competitive, so there's nothing saying PS4 Pro can't also go into the 40s. However, co-op shows that the Pro yields a definitive advantage over the X. Frame rates, however, are still going to go into the 40s on a couple of maps on both consoles, but it's clear cut that the Pro currently offers the best Warface experience on console. We'll have to wait and see if Crytek has any improvements to performance in store for the base or enhanced consoles in the future. But until then, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, or listening, and have a good one.